One of the key things that makes us alive is our ability to sense the universe around us. We're not just mounds of meat the way a sea sponge is, we're able to take in little signals from the world, process them, and make a little story that helps us maneuver from moment to moment. The fundamentals of that can get a little nutty if you think about them too hard. How are these images getting blasted into your eyes right now? How do you even understand what temperature it is here, or know exactly where your phone is as you hold this video in front of your face? It's weird because you can't really quantify consciousness. We really don't understand what consciousness even is. However, if you come on down to the molecular side of town, things actually start making a little more sense. And for real, it can be a little less brain-melting to understand yourself as a collection of cells perceiving the world and trying to make it all seem normal. And for me, hearing is the best place to start as you try to understand this. Like, how do vibrations in the air get turned into signals in your brain? It all comes down to a singular molecular handshake deep in your head. A handshake so sensitive yet powerful it makes hearing perhaps your most powerful sense, at least your highest resolution sense. So today, let's travel down the ear canal and meet the stereo cilia that make it possible for you to even hear my voice right now. And I'll do the best I can to describe how all this works. And of course, if you're into exploring the gorgeous complexity of your body and the world around you at the molecular level, subscribe to this channel. But for now, let's get down this ear hole. And yeah, like, what is sound anyway? How is my voice getting inside your head right now? Am I even real? And instead of talking about my dumb voice the whole time, let's turn to music to try to simplify this. So if I whip out this piano looking thing and play this key, this is a sound. A very simple one at that. All we're doing here is pushing on the air really fast, making it vibrate. Those vibrations are traveling from your headphones or your speakers or whatever into your ear. Specifically, this sound, again, is the note A4, which shakes the air 440 times a second, or 440 hertz. That's why you'll sometimes hear it called A440. If I jump up eight notes to the next A, it makes a much higher note and shakes the air 880 times a second. Down? Same deal, 220 times a second, and so on. Ultimately, those vibrations are what touch your ear. Fast vibrations are high sounds, slow vibrations are low sounds. Ultimately, those vibrations are what touch your ear by traveling down your ear canal and shaking your eardrum. Those vibrations shake up a couple of bones until you hit your cochlea right here. And this is where the party really starts. All vibrations end up here. This snail shell spiral organ is called the cochlea. This is where you convert meaningless air vibrations into neural impulses that turn into the voice you're hearing right now. Different regions of the cochlea get stimulated by different frequencies. Our A4 that I showed you earlier hits, get this, closer to the middle of our cochlea, while our higher A hits more toward the front of the cochlea. Low A is pretty deep in the spiral here, and so on. Each little horizontal slice of the cochlea corresponds to different frequencies. It's these different frequencies that allow us to understand and identify a huge range of different sounds. Right now, your cochlea is getting hit in a bunch of different ranges and converting them into neural impulses that tell you what my voice sounds like. But I've really enlarged this. In, in reality, the cochlea is so small, though. How can this little nub pick up and convert every sound you've ever heard and tell you about the richness of it? In order to show you that, we've got to go a little deeper. So your cochlea is actually a long, curled-up tube. All along this tube is a line of cells going the full length of the cochlea. These right here on the bottom are your inner hair cells. They're going to be doing the business of feeling sound for you. Zooming in and getting in more of a side view, we can finally start seeing how this happens. Every one of these cells in your inner ear has little protrusions like this, called stereocilia. I hope you like hanging out at this level, because we're going to be here a while. These stereocilia contain everything you need to understand how sound gets converted from air into brain waves. Key point number one about these is their different heights. That's no accident, I'm not that lazy. This staircase configuration is critical to the detection of the tiny vibrations that make up sound. And I mean, come on, y'all know I'm gonna zoom in one more time. Looking between these stereocilia, you'll see that the very top of one is connected to the side of the one next to it, the one that's taller than it, and this is where the magic happens. From the tip here, you've got a double strand of this protein string, protocadherin 15. This is just a standard chain of beta barrels anchored to the membrane of our stereocilia tip. If we move on up, we'll see that protocadherin 15 is linked to another string of protein, cadherin 23, which is anchored to the side of the stereocilia next door. These two are kind of double linked in a molecular handshake. This is the link that makes you hear. 
Nothing works without this. But what does that do? Well, we're lucky because we zoomed in on the A4 region of your cochlea, which means I'm going to have an easy time showing you how this works. I hit this A4 again, that sound vibrates your cochlea, and those vibrations localize on this spot, causing the fluid in a chamber beneath these stereocilia to ripple, which very gently pushes them into a membrane above them, which causes them to kind of tip over like this, moving in just this direction. Because these stereocilia are linked by that molecular handshake, when the body of one gets pushed, it pulls on the head of its downstairs neighbor. Hearing doesn't really feel like touch. You don't really examine hearing that way. You're just hearing the sound of my voice and it's just normal. But looking at it from the molecular side, you see that it's actually the softest way the outside world can touch you. Sound is touch. It's just touch you feel and interpret at the molecular level, at a molecular resolution. That pulling activates a specific nerve impulse in the hair cell below, and that nerve impulse is interpreted by your brain as a sound in a particular frequency. Mix a few thousand of these signals together, and bang, that's the sound of my voice. All that from a few hundred nanometers of protein. But now that we have a sense of just how much our hair cells can detect, and how sensitive they are as sensory cells, we still have one last question. How the heck do these wacky waving membrane protrusions transmit nerve impulses? I haven't connected you to neurology yet. In order to answer this, I'm going to have to take you right up to the edge of what researchers have discovered so far. This little tip is so small that we haven't fully unraveled all the proteins that live here. Let's go back to protocadherin 15 and the membrane it's connected to at the tip of a stereocilia. And now that we're down at the base here, we'll get a sense of just how this happens. Get ready for some mechanotransduction, nerds! So there are a lot of proteins embedded in the membrane of this stereocilia tip, and the exact process here is still being unraveled by researchers. Therefore, I'm going to take you through one model I read in this one paper on screen right here, and also listed in my sources cited on my Twitter, at this underscore clockwork. Check that out, feel free to join the conversation. There's a lot of cool models out there that kind of elucidate how this is happening. Here, when protocadherin 15 gets tugged, it actually stretches out enough to pull on the membrane itself, causing it to bulge out. Protocadherin is right next door to this kind of weird ion channel, TMC1. What's really interesting about TMC1 is that potentially it's a weird kind of ion channel where actually it's this groove on the side that allows ions to pass through. When you're learning about ion channels in regular old biology class, you think of them like opening and closing doors. Here, we're just playing with the side of a protein. Regardless, the tug is what changes the membrane shape enough to open a pore that allows potassium ions to flood into this hair cell proper. And if you know anything about neurology, you know what's coming. Those ions change the internal chemistry of the hair cell enough that they trip the neuron attached to the base here. And just like that, tugging on a hair cell fired a nerve cell. That impulse gets shot down the vestibulocochlear nerve and into your brain for interpreting. And that's how little vibrations in the air turn into signals in your head. I'm not joking, you're hearing at a molecular resolution, and the incredible precision of these stereocilia are what make it possible to even hear me describe them right now. It's really meta and weird. And this is a shorter video, but that's the main thing I want you to take away here. There are very few senses that aren't secretly just a more sensitive version of touch. Sure, hearing doesn't feel like touch, it doesn't really feel like anything, but it's actually the consequence of your most sensitive touch organ being physically moved by the air around you. Biology is a game of simple rules, but those rules get rise to really complex consequences. Your stereocilia are a great way of seeing that. This little molecular tug turns into a single nerve impulse that joins a storm of thousands of other pulses, all mixed together and interpreted in your mind as the sound of my voice. It's fun to pick things apart down to their fundamentals, but the real joy is up here in the aggregate of all those signals. But that's a good spot to leave it. We didn't even cover what these outer hair cells do or what other secret hair cells in other bizarre reaches of your cochlea do, but we'll definitely hit those areas up next time. For now, I just really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And as always, thank you so much for getting to the end of the video here. If you like this, please make sure you subscribe, and also make sure, if you can, to share this video. It's really important to get these videos out as much as possible so I can satisfy the algorithm gods. If you want to make sure that I keep making videos, feel free to join my supporters on Patreon listed here. You can feel free to check that out at patreon.com slash clockworkshow. Other than that, I really hope you check out my Twitter, at this underscore clockwork, where I have all of my sources cited and listed, and take comments from the scientific community. There's a lot of really great folks there, and also a couple of, like, secret animations that I haven't put on my YouTube channel yet, and I would love you to see if you, you know, have the time or whatever. 
other than that, this video would be no good without the endless support I get from the wonderful community over at Biocord. If you want to have access to the best life sciences community on the internet, feel free to check out discord.gg biology to learn more. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for getting to the end here. And as always, I like to leave you with peace, love, and cadherins. Everyone be well. Thank you so much.